We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we are going to finish up this Harlequin Solitaire Mini, and I'm going to paint this large fractured stone that's on the base. As always, if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in a future how-to video, please leave them down below in the comments. We want to paint this piece of the base to look like stone. However, we want it to have some purple undertones so it kind of melds into some of the shades that we used on the solitaire. So we're going to start with a purple color. We're going to use the color Zarius Purple. We're going to mix it with some Lamian Medium before we apply it. And we want to thin down all of the paints that we're applying with a regular brushing method. We are going to be dry brushing a few layers and those paints we're not going to be thinning down in any way. But any paint that we're applying wet, we want to make sure that we have a little bit more of a fluid consistency as it goes on. And this Zarius purple color is going all over all of the stone. We're going to apply a couple layers to make sure that we get a nice opaque coat over the black. And we also want to make sure that this gets down into all of the nooks and crannies and the deepest shadows. This stone has a lot of sculpted symbols on it and some edging on the outer edge. And we want to make sure that this purple gets right down into all of those cracks because we want this purple to be our darkest shadow versus having the black be our darkest shadow. Our next color is going to be Demonette Hide. And this is one of the layers that I'm applying as a dry brush. Dry brushing stone is nice because it has some sharp edges that we can really catch with the dry brushing process and we want the edges to be nice and bright. It also means that we can have a little bit more of a inconsistency on in our paint. It doesn't necessarily need to be one flat layer. We can have some areas that are lighter and some areas that are darker. And in fact, we want that because that kind of gives the stone a little bit more of a natural look. So we're dry brushing this on. We want to take most of the paint off of our brush and apply it in several small layers using lots of little tiny strokes to build up the color. That keeps it from going on too streaky. Even though we don't necessarily need the paint to be completely one flat color, we do want to make sure that we keep brush strokes and any kind of streakiness out of the process. Our next color is going to be Slanish Gray. This is another gray that's going to help us build up more of a stone look, but it's got that purple undertone that we're trying to keep on the rock. And this is another layer that we're dry brushing on top. We want to make sure that we start to build up some areas that are a little bit lighter than others and some areas that have a little bit more shadow while still catching all of the edges because one area that we do want to make sure that we have nice and bright is going to be all of the edges. And after we have one layer of this dry brush down, I want to make sure that I go back and I add a second layer on top of it. Again, just making some areas that are even brighter and toning down this purple so it's starting to look a little bit more gray. Our next color is going to be Pallid Witch Flesh. This is also a soft dry brush. I just really like that kind of soft, translucent look for basing elements so that's why most of these layers have been dry brushed on and this is another one that we're going to apply in two layers the first one's going to be a little bit more subtle and then the second layer is really going to brighten things up and we're highlighting it mostly on those areas that we picked out to be our brightest spots but we want to make sure a little of this goes everywhere just so that all of the colors blend together really well Next, we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade and I want to apply this all over everything. It's just going to kind of tint the stone. It's going to deepen some of the shadows that may have been painted over with our dry brush and it's going to help everything blend together. This is going to give all of the shadows a little bit more of a brown tint to them so that this purple looks more like stone while still keeping a little bit of purple undertones so that everything matches up. Next, I want to go back with that Pallid Witch Flesh. This time I'm mixing some Lamian Medium into my paint. 
and I'm taking a detail brush and I'm going to line all of the edges of this broken stone detail. I wanna make sure that I line the outer edges, which are nice and boxy, but also all of the details that are inside, all of the script and the curved lines that are sculpted on here. I just wanna make sure that those really stand out and don't get lost, even though it's a basing element. I went ahead and painted the surrounding rocks a nice gray. And with that, this Harlequin Solitaire is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I'm going to begin painting an Inquisitor Eisenhorn model in the mini Wargaming Vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a vault membership, you can go ahead and click the link sign up for a seven day free trial and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial and happy wargaming.